All right, guys, I appreciate that. Appreciate y'all being here. Uh, one of the things that I like to discuss a lot, you know, and like to go over is so many times in this business, all you hear about is how great it is and how much money you're going to make, and it's so easy. And um, I'm not that type of person. Anyone that knows me, any of my guys on the call definitely know that. Uh, I tell you the cold, hard truth, and I believe if you know the facts, you're able to go into things more prepared. And today's call, we're going to kind of talk about some of the, you know, this business, I always call it a roller coaster ride. Um, but if you have the right attitude, the right system, and you put the right plan in place, you can limit those slumps. And, you know, my job is to try to help you find a couple different things that maybe you haven't thought about that maybe you can limit some of those slumps. And some of the things is, you know, you can eliminate them before they ever happen and it makes this business so much more re rewarding. Uh, so I wanted to go over a few things. Uh, mostly, I know most of you have heard this before, but in this business, we all have bad days. Uh, we all have bad weeks. But as long as you have a game plan and a system and you stick to it, it's very hard to have a bad month. It might not be the month that you're used to having, but you'll still make money as long as you push through. Uh, don't go home and, you know, with your tail tucked and you have two appointments left, but everything's been going bad that day, just keep pushing forward, and usually that last appointment of the day will be what changes your whole day around, your week around, even your month around. So you have to push through. Um, there's a couple little groups that I wanted to talk about to help limit, it, uh, limit the slumps. One is everybody has to realize that this is a business. You know, this is not some nine to five, you clock in, you clock out, and you're done. And as soon as you realize that, you know, you have to treat it that way and run it that way. Uh, and, I mean, keep in mind, in this business, I mean, if you go broke, you're out of business. You know, you, you can't pay your employees. You know, if you own the store, you, if you're completely broke, you can't pay salary. You can't pay the utilities. So you're out of business. Um, so make sure that you run this like a business. Any new agents on the call, keep in mind, your first few months, you're going to be learning things like that. But as far as income, that's some of the best months because chargebacks aren't a factor yet. You know, all the money you write, you're, I mean, all the business you write, you're pretty clear with all companies, so it's all going to pay you. Uh, but you have to have that in mind that in a few months, some of those are going to fall off. If you're not putting a little bit of that aside and preparing for it, when those do fall off, that's whenever your attitude takes a hit and you start having, you know, worse sales or, you know, you don't go out and work the way you need to because you look at it and say, man, I got to go out this week and write some, you know, I have to write some business, but I have 2,000 in chargebacks to cover and then 500 in leads, you know, whereas the previous three months you might have been making eight to 10,000 a month and not put any of that aside to where it would get you through that bad week, you know, so you have to prepare this as a business. If you wake up and you got 5,000 in deposits, that's great. That doesn't mean you go buy a $5,000 four-wheeler. You know, you need to put some of that aside for the weeks that's bad because this is a numbers game, and if you run the numbers, they work. Um, but you're going to have a week to where you make three weeks' worth of income in a week. Well, that probably means you're going to have a bad week at some point, so prepare for it and have that money there. And, you know, money changes everything in this business. You know, if you're not – I call it commission breath. You know, if you're not starving for money, you're, you know, the clients can't tell it. You're in the right attitude, right mindset, and things come a lot easier. Uh, one other part about running it like a business, I think one of the worst things I can hear from an agent is you talk to an agent and they're griping because the $184 app they wrote charged back. And they're talking about, yeah, the client, their money wasn't there. You know, uh, when, you know well, what day did you draft it on? Well, I drafted it on the 18th. Well, what day does that client get paid? Oh, he gets paid on the third. Well, no, you know, there's the reason that you probably have a chargeback. Yeah, but he wanted the 18th. You know, in this business, the beauty of it is we get to choose our clients. I have walked out of houses before just because I knew for a fact it was a chargeback 100%. They was not budging on draft dates. Um, one of the things you have to learn in this business, when we get down to the uh, – banking information and draft day, I don't just sit there and say, all right, Miss Mary, what day do you want to pay this? You know, I simply say, now, Miss Mary, what day does, you know, do you receive your check every month? On the third? Okay, good. 
well, with this company here, with Transamerica, we can do Social Security billing, and we'll just set it up like that. And I just move on. And they just assume that it's going to be on the third. But every now and then you have somebody stop and say, well, I get paid on the third, but let's do it on the sixth to make sure it's there. For all new agents, they're not wanting to make sure it's there. They're wanting to take the money out and pay everything else and then see if they got enough to pay for your insurance, you know. And I tell my clients, this is not something you pay after the other bills are, are paid. This is something you pay first. Um, in, with Social Security, you know, they're going to pay you on the third or sooner. If the third hits on a weekend, you're going to get it the Friday before. So there's no reason to put it on the sixth. You know, these companies want us to put it on the, you know, the day you get your money, and that's what we're going to need to do. And then I move forward. I just keep going. Well, if they stop me again, you know, you might have to address it at that point. But I'm not one of those that is, you know, I'm not going to write somebody and put their draft 10 days after they get paid and they only get one, you know, check a month. Now, there's always exceptions to the rule. One exception, like we talked about last week with replacements, if I replace a policy they've been paying on for six years and they pay it on the 18th, I want to pick the 18th. You know, because they're comfortable with that day. They've been doing it for six years on that day, so I would do that. Or we all go into the houses to where, you know, they retire from General Motors and there's a husband and wife, and you know they keep some money in the bank. A lot of times you can, you know, I'll ask them, what day do you feel comfortable paying your bills on? So there is exceptions to the rule, but overall, you know, I just put it on the day they get their money. That way it's a lot higher chance of it sticking. Um, and I see a lot of new agents that fail from that. Uh, a couple of the companies where I can see pending apps, anytime I look down and the agent's got 10 apps pending and they're 11th, 9th, 17th, 21st, just all random days, that agent is going to have a lot more chargebacks than other agents. Uh, all of my top producers, when you look at that, it's third, 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 third Wednesday, first. You know, it's Social Security billing days. And that agent is going to lose a lot less business doing it that way. Uh, the second group I kind of want to talk about is attitude. In this business, attitude's everything, 100%. Um, you know, one thing that I do a lot and I challenge you to do is kind of if, if I'm training an agent, I always do it with them. But if you're by yourself, you can do it. But compete with yourself. Um, and it could be something minor, but you pull up to a house just kind of, before you get out, just kind of think to yourself and say, I'll tell you what, in this house, I'm going to get three referrals. I don't care what else happens. I don't care if I write it. I'm going to get three referrals. And now it's a game to you and it's a competition, and you're going to try whatever you need to try to get three referrals out of that house. It could be before you leave the house, you know what, I'm going to talk to two neighbors today, you know, two people that live beside one of my leads. I'm going to go to two houses today that's not a lead. Or I've, I've pulled up the houses before. I look at the guy I'm training, and I said, buddy, we're going to write this client. And he's like, oh, you've been here before? No, I don't have a clue who these people are. But we're going to write it. And what that does is that causes me to walk in that door with the right attitude. I'm upbeat. It's kind of like I'm performing at that point. I'm, I'm you know, putting on a show. I'm trying even harder. Now, I'm talking a lot smoother to the client, and if you do that, even when you're having a bad day, you do that and you push forward and you do it, and you'll close more sales, you'll get more referrals, you'll prospect a little bit more. You know, so to me, that's very important. That helps, you know, train your attitude. Uh, another part about attitude, uh, especially new agents, stay away from what I call agent killers. As a new agent, you're going to deal with people, and they're going to say, all right, well, yeah, this looks good. Let me uh, – I'm going to call my daughter tonight, and I'm going to call you tomorrow, and then you can come by and you can get this road up. Those agents will call me, and they're on cloud nine. They're super excited. They got an app they're going to write tomorrow. And me being blunt, and I just tell them point blank, look, you can pretty much throw that lead away. They're not calling you tomorrow. You know, if you wasn't able to get the deal done right then, one out of 100 is going to call you back. So don't have your hopes up for that because then you get let down. Instead, believe they're not going to call you back. And if they do, that's even a bonus. That just helps your attitude even more. But you're not setting yourself up to be disappointed or let down. Uh, also, you have people, yeah, let's go ahead and write it up, and then I'll just mail it in every month. And then you, you get to ding the app, and then you're all excited. Those people don't really mail payments in. It's very, very rare. So 
stay away from agent killers. Stay away from, you know, going to make money down the road. You go in, you try to close them right then. If you don't get them, that doesn't mean if they tell you to call them next Wednesday, you still call them, but don't have your hopes up that this is going to be a sale. Uh, but when you do call them, like I said, just kind of change your attitude. Like, you know what, I'm going to call this person and I'm going to find a way to get back to their house and write them. You know, so you have the right attitude when you call them, but you don't want to get your hopes up on things. If you sit with them, you've presented them, the decision maker's there, and you're not able to close them, there's a good chance you're not going to close them. So just move on because what they just do, they kind of stop looking for an app as hard because they think they have that one in the bag, and you don't yet. Act like you don't have it and keep working, and then hopefully by doing that, karma will work out, and you'll write two or three more apps that day, and then that person call you back the next day, and then it's a bonus. You know, so make sure you stay away from that. Uh, another group I kind of want to talk about is kind of a way to make more money. You know, if you prepare right, you can make more money in this business. Spend your time learning your companies. You know, read cheat sheets or learn underwriting guides. Do things like that because as a new agent, you can avoid the slumps in this business by writing companies that pay you more money. You know, if you wind up writing a Gerber, and you ding it, and everybody's, you know, excited, or you wrote an AIG. But after, you know, talking to another agent, you realize you could have wrote them Transamerica Standard and made full commission and made, instead of making $200, you'd have made $450. You know, learning that stuff, it helps you make more money on the sales that count, and it avoids those, those slumps don't hit you as bad. You know, so you're able to make a little bit more money on each sale by knowing your underwriting. Uh Follow referral trails. You know, that's a way to avoid slumps as well. If I replace a Lincoln Heritage policy, an old American policy, a senior life policy, instantly once it's done, I want to know all of their referrals. And the reasoning is a lot of those captive companies require their agents to get referrals. So if you write Miss Mary, she had to give that Lincoln Heritage guy her referrals. So if you go see her referrals, the same people she gave to him, there's a chance he wrote some of them. So you might brag because you replaced a two-month-old Lincoln Heritage policy and got her twice as much coverage. Yeah, but did you get referrals and go re write three more and help, you know, the people she referred to that agent? A lot of times if you follow that referral trail, you get other freebie apps that's just layups. They're just easy, easy to get. So make sure you do that. Uh, one other thing I'm very, very, you know, I urge agents to do is get a CRM a customer relations manager or resource manager, whatever it's called, get a CRM and put your clients in it. Uh, I use Zoho. Y'all might have a C. I don't, it don't matter what CRM you use, but everybody asks me, they put so much detail. I went to Zoho and I edited my tabs and I put name, address, phone number, notes. That's it. And in my notes, I'll put on, you know, February 22nd, 2017, I wrote a Transamerica standard for, $32 a month, 5,000 coverage. The draft date's on the third of every month. And then I put notes. I wrote Transamerica Standard because they're on insulin. Then I put another note. Um, the client had a dog named Sally. Anything you can make a note on that you remember. And if you ever have to call that client back, you get that, hey, Miss Mary, how's Sally doing? You know, and to them, that's they don't have people that do stuff like that. So it makes you know, you are a lot more important to them once you do that, and they seem more important to you. And another reason I do the CRM, anybody that's wrote a good bit of apps, you know, you've showed a client three or five prices or whatever you do, and I, it happens all the time. They look at a higher one and say, I really, really want that one. But right now, till I get some stuff figured out, I need to go with this one right here. So they pick a smaller one. I put all those notes in my CRM, and in there, I put, you know, really wanted the the gold plan, but went with the bronze. And after three, four, five months, I can call back through that CRM and or just go by their house to give them a new business card and say hi and just tell them, look, I know when I was here before, you really wanted that $12,000 policy, but we went with the eight. Um, I just wanted to stop by today, I mean, see if anything had changed. And, and let's look at it and kind of see what that difference in price would be for you. And you would have people that they're all right now they trust you, 
You know, they might have went with a lower one because they're like, man, I don't really know if this guy's going to just take my bank account information and run with it. Well, now they trust you. They know it's legit, and you could get sales. Why that's also important, when you hit these slumps, you know, because they're coming. If you're in this business and anybody's telling you you're not going to hit a slump, they're lying to you. I hate to say it. But when you hit those slumps, I can go to my CRM right now, and I could go within a 30-mile radius of my office, and I could write $10,000 next week just working my CRM just because I have nine years of clients in there. I have too many people to call and talk to. Um, that's also important because down the road, if you get in the med sumps, just say, well, there's your clientele right there. Look through there, find the people 65 or, you know, med sump age, call them up and see who they carry their Medicare supplement with. So it's very important to build a book of business because if not, you're going to look back. You've been doing it eight years. You're writing 300 people a year, and you can't tell me none of their names, addresses, phone numbers, what they bought, nothing. So it's very important to have some kind of system like that because it can pull you out of a bad, dark time when you're, you know, have a lot of chargebacks on you and you need to go make some money. Um, if you're a new agent, I also tell you to avoid some slumps is to do companies with phone interviews when you can. You know, if you're kind of unsure if they would qualify for a plan, you write a company, you go home, you upload it, you find out it gets changed to a graded, and you need to go back. I mean, you was expecting to get paid. Now you're not, you know, and then your attitude takes a hit. Well, try to pick a company you can do a phone interview right there, and let's get an approval. That way, if it gets changed, you can pull out a different company. You're still there, and you can figure it out for the, you know, right in front of the client. Um, one other thing I see agents do a whole lot, uh, don't make unnecessary recommendations. If you're sitting with a client, they told you they, need, they have a policy, but they're needing a little more, quote it to them. I'll have clients call me, I mean, agents call me, and I'm sitting here with Mary, and she's needing a policy, but I, I think maybe a return of premium term will be better, or a universal life, or this, or that. Unless you've got hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank and you're doing this for fun, she she has a need, you have a solution. Close it and be done. You know, only time I go away from final expense is if they're really healthy and the only way I can replace their policy is to do a fully underwritten, uh, I would go that route. Or if term comes up, if they tell you, main reason I sent that in, I just had to refinance my house for 10 years and I need a policy for that. The bank said I need to get it. Well, other than rare situations like that, I'm going in with final expense and I'm presenting final expense and something's going to have to happen to make me veer from that at all. So stick with the, with what you know. Um, I think the last little group that I wanted to discuss is probably the most important. I know there's agents on this call that fall into this category. Um, prepare a system. Get with your upline or chase or whoever. Get a system in place. I'm going to get 20 direct mail leads a week. All right, great. Are you going to door knock them? You're going to set appointments? You're going to mix it up? How are you going to do it? Get your system and know what you're going to do and stay laser focused on that. I see agents fail all the time. They write final expense for four or five months. They're making money. They get a stupid spam email. They read it. They jump on a webinar, and all of a sudden, they can make millions of dollars selling long-term care. So now this agent stops his lead flow to try out long-term care, and it don't work. Well, now what can he do? All right, I'm going to try to write, you know, cancer policies. Well, let's start trying to write that. And they wind up being a jack-of-all-trades but a master of none. Stay laser focused and master it. Um, a lot of you know know this part about me, and some don't. But you know, I'm a black belt in Shotokan karate. And by being a black belt, what we used to see, there would be people join our karate class, and then they would go 20 miles down the road and they would join a jujitsu class, or they would go join boxing. But the problem is, those people that did that, they never become a black belt in any form. Whereas the people that just stuck with Shotokan and become a black belt, then they moved on and got a black belt in other other uh, martial arts. And by doing that, you mastered what you're doing, you stay laser focused on that, and you complete it. If you're going to do final expense, I'm not saying that's the only option you can do. If you're going to do final expense, master it. You know, like I tell my agents, become a black belt of final expense. And then you have this down pat where you can make money easily then you can start adding other things into it. 
Some of you might have a different manager and they tell you differently. Well, that's up to you and your manager. Listen to them. But, I, you know, I see agents all the time jumping ship. You know, they're wanting to try this out and that out. So my recommendation is stay laser focused, follow your system, delete all them stupid spam emails, don't be trying to get on them webinars. A lot of times it's by people that, you know, they couldn't sell a heater to an Eskimo, and they're going to teach you how to make $500,000 in three months and drive a BMW. It's not going to happen. Stick with what works. This is not some get-rich-quick scheme, but if you work hard, if you can make money. The main thing is if you do some of these things I said, you can stop some of the bad things, you know, some of the slumps from happening. Um, and, you know, what I want to close with is whenever I talk about attitude, I'm going to run this down for you. If you believe you are not, you're not going to close somebody, you're not going to close them. You know, if you think you're going to get no-showed at your next appointment because they didn't sound real good when you set an appointment, well, guess what? Don't even go. You're going to be no-showed, you know. If you don't think that the client can afford it because you pull up and it's a rundown house, well, guess what? They can't. Why don't you just back out and leave? You know, if they're under 60 and you wanted to door knock it, but there ain't no need in door knocking it because if they're under 60, they're at work right now. They're not going to be home. Yeah, don't go door knock it. They're not going to be home. If you believe you can't, you can't. It's all about attitude. You have to pull up and be like, you know what? These people live in a raggedy house. Because they spend all their money on the most important things, their life insurance and their family. That's why they live in this house, you know. Man, this guy, he's he's 58 years old. He probably ain't working. He probably retired at 54, and he's got $100,000 ready to buy a single pay whole life. You know, it's all attitude. If you're, if you're negative about everything, you're only going to get negative results. Stay positive. Stay pumped up. I also suggest find somebody on the group chat. Uh, that you relate with. I have agents on there that they talk to each other daily and pump each other up. I don't know about it. They just have created a friendship from being on there. I talk to people every day. I vent the agents, and I have agents that I call. When I vent to them, they pump me up. They're like, dude, look how much you wrote last week. Why are you griping? It's only lunch. You know, you haven't wrote anything before lunch. Who cares? This is not, you know, Eric said it on the group chat. You know, it's not a, a sprint. It's a marathon. Don't worry about what happens in one day. Just keep working and following the system, and it'll work out for the month. Uh, the last thing I will say for new agents, I, I probably my best advice, if you can tell me what's happening on the new Netflix movies and all the TV shows and all this stuff, you're doing something wrong. Turn the TV off. Turn off Facebook. Listen to training audios, read underwriting guides, master your business if you're serious about this, learn the stuff that's important, and I promise you, if you do all that right now and you sacrifice that TV and all the Facebook and just wasting your time every day, if you sacrifice that for now, down the road you're going to have plenty of time to be able to watch TV if you want. Um, instead of watching shows of people in the Bahamas or in Thailand, you got the money to just go to Thailand. Why watch it on TV? Uh, I have, I tell, you know, I tell my guys a lot, and the saying is, you you can't have a million dollar dream with a minimum wage work ethic. You know, so many people want to make money, but they're not willing to do what it takes. You know, invest in yourself. Read the guides. You know, train. Talk to other people that do what you do successfully. And follow some of this guidance to try to avoid some of the slumps, and I, I think you're, you'll find that this business is a lot more rewarding than you even imagine. All right, Chase, that's all I got for now.